Hi there, Dr. Manning here. Just wanted to present a case of a particularly good outcome that uh, we just had follow up in the clinic the other day. So this was a patient uh, with Achilles tendinopathy that also had a partial tear and we treated her with regenerative medicine. She, was a, she is a 36 year old female. She's a runner with persistent bilateral posterior heel pain, worse with activity. This had started about five years ago without a specific injury. Didn't necessarily correlate with any increased activity or changes in training regimen, um, but it had started and then it had gotten a little bit worse. And then um, patient sought care with primary care and tried all these different treatments, including physical therapy, splinting, taking oral anti-inflammatories, and it just wasn't getting better with all of those. Pain score with activity, seven out of 10. Prior to the seeing me, she hadn't had any imaging done. So we started off with an X-ray, taking a look here of her ankle and heel. No particular obvious abnormality there. Then we performed a diagnostic ultrasound. And with this diagnostic ultrasound, you can see that the Achilles tendon that comes in and inserts here, that this area, there's this focal hypochoic changes, loss of the normal parallel bright hyperechoic image of the collagen fibers. And that's consistent with the tendinosis, but also there is disruption of the collagen in a manner that there's likely a partial tear. And so we can see particularly this focal area has a partial tear. This is what normal tendon is supposed to look like. And this is the tendinopathic area. Patient also has an associated retrocalcaneal bursitis. So this is using the ultrasound probe to look in line with the tendon. And this is looking on a short view of the tendon to confirm that right here, right in the center of the tendon is the area of concern. So due to the partial tear, I wanted uh, to inform the patient that they, they could have a surgical option and, and she could be referred to an orthopedic surgeon just to see what their opinion was, if not for treatment. There was another option of a percutaneous tenotomy using a 10X device to get in there and remove the diseased part of the tendon and, and or the patient could have an orthobiologic therapy. Now, due to the partial tear in the tendon, I advise the patient that we should not only include platelet-rich plasma or PRP, but we should also include something that can fill in that tendon. And that's where the adipose tissue or MFAT microfragmented adipose tissue comes into play. PRP is great and it's used really commonly in regenerative medicine. You just gotta make sure you get a good PRP product. But for this type of a partial tear, I find that the adipose tissue in conjunction with the PRP does a better job of filling in that gap in the tissue and getting it to heal more completely. After discussing all of those options with the patient, the patient elected to proceed with the adipose tissue and PRP at the same time. In order to get the adipose tissue, we, we get the adipose tissue from the patient herself and we perform a mini liposuction procedure here, the deep subcutaneous adipose tissue. So this is muscle, this is adipose, this is adipose, and this is the skin gonna be on the very top. Here we are introducing a needle numbing, and then we introduce a cannula here, 
and we introduce a fluid called tumescent. You can see that the change in the texture and change in the size of this adipose layer of this particular patient as being an avid runner and athlete um, didn't have a whole lot of adipose tissue, but enough. You can see that as we progress before we take out the adipose tissue, we, the adipose tissue changes in its consistency and echo texture. So here is the original state. Here we've started to introduce the tumescent. Here we're about ready to go in and aspirate out the adipose performing a liposuction. And this is the needle going through. As you can tell, you can perform this really nicely with ultrasound guidance. And this whole procedure can be done very comfortably, very precisely, and very effectively all under ultrasound guidance. Not too many practitioners or clinics that perform this type of procedure actually use the ultrasound guidance. We think it should be the standard of care. Once the adipose tissue was acquired, we took that to the lab along with the, the blood from the blood draw for the PRP and it was washed and kind of cleaned and then microfragmented. Otherwise it wasn't changed in any form or fashion. This is the needle that we used to put into the tendon at that area of that partial tear and area of tendinosis. And then this hyperechoic or bright tissue is the actual adipose tissue flowing into the tendon, path of least resistance where the tendon has disease. One thing to note is you can have the best stem cells, you can have the best regenerative medicine, but unless you get it precisely in the right spot, it doesn't work. It doesn't work nearly as well if it even is gonna work at all. So it's crucial that if you're going to have a regenerative medicine procedure that the practitioner is using image guidance and that they actually know how to use the image guidance not everybody who puts an ultrasound probe on the, some on a patient's skin is actually watching the needle go into the focal area of defect one thing that you can know is um, if you're looking or interested in this type of procedure you might want to make sure that you're physician performing this either has a credential called RMSK, which is a basic, um, it's not basic, but it's an advanced practitioner certification that really is a standard that shows that they should know what they're doing as far as not only diagnostically, but also image guidance for injections, or if they've had a specific residency where they do interventional radiology or interventional orthopedics. So we followed up at six weeks and the patient was noticing 16% improvement, quite a reduction in the pain score and had begun to return to sport, not fully, but was working back into running. At the 12 week follow-up patient noticed or reported 80% improvement, only a one out of 10 of pain. And that was only with activity. We didn't, we missed our six week follow up, our six month follow up, but I did call the patient just because I was curious how she was doing. And she had noted at that time complete resolution of the symptoms. At the nine month follow up, she had a complete re resolution, returned to full sport, and no pain at all. At the three month follow up, this is what the tendon looked like. So as you can see, even though the patient was doing physical therapy and was running again and was feeling asymptomatic, you could see that where the adipose tissue was placed with that precise image guidance, it is still there. And now what you can notice is instead of it having an adipose tissue look, it is starting to remodel and look more like the native collagen. So not only has it filled in the defect where the partial tear was, but it's starting to incorporate and, and become um, normal native tendon healing itself. So that 
previous one was three months, and then this is the 10 month follow up. Same pattern. See, here's the graft. Here's the graft, still intact, still differentiating and looking more and more like native normal tendon. And the remaining of the Achilles tendon is looking very nice as well. So here was our original baseline. And then here was the follow up at the three month, the 10 month, obviously, that we just saw looked even better. So I suspect and expect this patient to have continued durable improvement and for this to be healed first and foremost, and so that uh, there will be no intervention needed in the future and this Achilles tendon will be better off for it. So just an example of the type of work that I do here, Restore PDX, and some of the things that um, show pr pretty profound benefit using regenerative medicine. All right, well, thank you.